Hey book friends, welcome back to another video. Welcome to another unhaul project type video. I've made two others in this series where I have focused on my historical fiction books and the other I have focused on my mystery thriller type books. But in today's video, fantasy. I'm going through all my fantasy books and a few science fiction, but it's mostly fantasy. And I'm gonna take you through my whole collection and I'm gonna put the books in three different piles. The first pile being I've already read the book and I wanna keep it because fantasy is a genre that I love to reread. So read, but keep. And another pile will be books I still want to read. So they're my TBR books. I'm going to keep them because I still want to read them. And then the fourth pile is gonna be the books I plan to unhaul. And so these books can either be ones I have previously read and don't really like, or ones that I just don't think I'm going to read. And so as I'm looking at all my books, which I have them here, out here on my couch, I feel like I'm not gonna unhaul too many books, but we shall see. I mean, I thought I was gonna unhaul a ton of thriller books and I didn't end up unhauling too many last time, but let's just hop in. There are a lot of books to cover in this video. So hi, my name is Angie. Welcome to the channel if you're new here or welcome back if you have been coming for a while. So like I said, we're gonna be going through all my fantasy science fiction books today and decide if I'm gonna keep them, what I'm gonna do with them, and the ones I plan on not keeping, I will be posting actually to my new Pango Books shop thing that I set up. And I literally just set it up because I have a bunch of books from my past unhaul videos and I thought I would share them with you all. I'm actually planning on just like dropping a bunch of prices so I can get them out quickly. So I'll have that linked down below. So let's just hop in because there's entirely too many books to get to. So I'll start with this one because it was just on top. These are in no particular order. So this is The House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J. Mass. First book in the Crescent City series. I really enjoyed this book. I read it last year sometime and I thought it was fantastic. It surprised me. I didn't think I was going to like her writing style as much as I did. I just thought it was a very entertaining, fast-paced, fun, distraction, take-me-away kind of book about this girl named Bryce who is a half-fae, half-human who gets involved in this like murder mystery and she has been assigned a fallen angel named Hunt Athelar to help her with that in this world of Crescent City where there's angels and werewolves and vampires and it's just really fun. I really enjoyed this book. So I have some Robin Hobb books. So if you've been on my channel this year, you will know I've been really enjoying Robin Hobb. So I started this year with Assassin's Apprentice and then I quickly read the next two, Royal Assassin and Assassin's Quest. So this is the first series in the bigger world of the Elderling that is written by Robin Hobb and I have just, I loved this series. It's about Fitz, who is the bastard son of the prince in waiting. And in this first book, he is dropped off at the castle by his maternal grandfather, which results in his father abdicating the throne and moving to the countryside and nobody knowing what to do with Fitz. And then he grows up in the castle and eventually the king takes a liking to him and decides to make him the royal assassin. I'm keeping all the Robin Hobb and I don't wanna to say too much about each individual book because there's spoilers and stuff, but I can tell you about the series. So the second series that I'm working my way through right now is the Live Ship Trader series. That includes Ship of Magic, Mad Ship, and Ship of Destiny. So these three, this is a fantastic world as well. It is related to the other world that is found in the Assassin's Apprentice, but it has to do with pirates and ships that come alive and all of these different things. So I have really enjoyed this, but again, keeping these. And then for the next series, so the third series, the Tawny Man series, and the books are Fool's Errand, The Golden Fool, and Fool's Fate. So I haven't read any of these, but I'm keeping all of them. I actually happen to have an extra copy of Fool's Fate if I remember right, the bookseller accidentally sent me an extra copy. So I'm unhauling one book, but only because it is a duplicate. So there's my first unhaul. That's exciting. Not because I didn't like it, but because I have an extra. Okay, next series. So that's one thing about science fiction and fantasy is I'm going to mostly talk in series for you guys. And so the next series I want to talk about, oh my gosh, I just finished it and I loved it. So it is the Red Rising trilogy by Pierce Brown. So this is a science fiction series about this main character named Darrow who lives on Mars. And in this society, there's a hierarchy based on colors, red being the lowest and golds being the highest. And over time, Darrow learns about kind of what the golds are doing to suppress the reds and the other colors. And he wants to seek revenge. And basically he spends all three of these books doing it. I feel like I'm still recovering from this book series, to be honest. It was so good. 
so emotionally impactful. I feel like Pierce Brown is similar to Robin Hobb where they are okay messing with the characters, the characters you love and just having terrible things happen to them, but it's different, but I love both. So obviously I'm keeping these. Okay, so I've read this and this one I'm on the fence about. So this is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jeminson. I've heard amazing things. I've heard people love this book. I read it and I didn't love it. And I'm not sure if it was just because it was early in when I was trying to get back into fantasy reading and I just bit off more than I can chew with this book because I felt like it was confusing and hard to understand what was going on. And I didn't necessarily connect with the characters. And this one had kind of a little tough start to it where one of the main characters is a mother and she's grieving a significant event in her life. And as a mom, it was just a hard thing to read about. And it happens like right away and just, I feel like it set the tone for the book and it was hard for me to recover from that. But yet I feel like I've heard such good things about the whole trilogy. And so this, I'm gonna put this on a maybe pile. I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna put it on the unhaul pile, but it's kind of more of a maybe. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I feel like I want to know what everybody loved about it, but I don't wanna reread that book. And so then I'm like, are the other two books like that? I have no idea. So I'm putting that on the unhaul pile even though I know that's like a favorite of so many people. Okay, another one I have here is Master of Sorrows by Justin T. Call. I have not read this yet. I still want to read it. It is a gigantic epic fantasy book, but it has to do with a world where it's like illegal to have magic almost. It's a bad thing in this society as well as any kind of handicap. And then there's this boy that we're following. He's an orphaned boy who is being like trained at this academy and he's hiding the fact that he has magic and he is disabled. And then it follows him growing up. I think this is more of a coming of age story, but the twist is this is like an origin story to like a dark Lord. So this kid becomes the evil bad guy. And I wanna just give it a try. I wanna give that author a try. So I'm keeping that. That'll stay in my TBR pile. Okay, here's another book that I have read, but I wanna reread and I'm planning on rereading it with my sister. So this is Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. I read this like two years ago, and I enjoyed it. I didn't love it. It wasn't blown away, but I want to continue with the series. But I feel like it was a really good beginner fantasy book because it's set in London, but the catch is that there's different Londons and they all have different colors. So there's Black London, White London, Gray London, and Red London. And one of our main characters can travel between the different Londons, which most people cannot. And during one of those trips, he brings back something he shouldn't bring back and it starts this cascade of events. I mean, I definitely wasn't blown away by this book, but I didn't dislike it or anything. I, it, it was kind of a, I like it mostly sort of book. So I think I'm gonna try rereading it and see where it goes from there. So I have these books, Nevermore. So this is by Jessica Townsend. I have Nevermore, Wondersmith, and Hollowpox. And this has to do with a main character of Morgan Crow, who in the first book, she's like 11 years old and she has been deemed like a cursed child in her town and she knows that she's going to die on her 11th birthday or something like that. Until the day of her birthday, she gets kind of whisked away by this man named Jupiter North, who I love, and into this world of Nevermore, which is a, a place where there is like a school, the Wondrous Society, where she learns magic. I've enjoyed every one and I'm so excited for the fourth one to come out. So clearly I'm keeping those. And so the next book I have is Grace of Kings by Ken Liu. So this is the first book in a series, book one of the Dandelion Dynasty. I don't know much about this. I feel like it's kind of a revolution type book where there's a king who has united seven lands into one empire and it should be a good thing, but it's a bad thing. And then there's different people who are now trying to push back against that and kind of overthrow the king, I believe. And I've heard good things about this whole trilogy, especially the trilogy as a whole, not necessarily the first book. I don't know much about that, but I'm keeping it. Okay, next. So I have some Naomi Nobeck books and I have read this one, Spinning Silver, and I have not read Uprooted, but I really enjoyed this one. It's kind of a Rumpelstiltskin retelling. And this one also has fairy tale vibes to it. These are YA books to my understanding. And I really enjoyed it. I like the main character in this book quite a bit and I'm hopeful that I will like Uprooted. So I'm keeping both of those. So I've had this book for ages. So The Martian by Andy Weir. I've started it a couple times, I feel like, and I really liked the movie. And I feel like I would really like this book. It's a sci-fi book about a man stuck on Mars. And 
I just really enjoyed the inner monologue of the man as he's talking about the different things he has to go through and solve and all of that. I'm not sure why I haven't finished it. I'm trying to decide if I want to unhaul this. Do I actually want to read it? I think I'm going to put this on a maybe pile. I'm going to put this on a maybe pile. Okay, another one is Circe by Madeline Miller. I haven't read any of her books, but I've heard such good things. And this one in particular about Zeus banishing Circe to an island and where it goes from there. I'm honestly not sure. I'm not up on my like, Greek myths, but I've heard good things and I really do want to read it. I'm keeping it. I'm keeping it. Ah, this book. This is another one I am just not sure about. I'm not sure about this book. I read it and I liked it okay. I feel like I didn't really connect with the characters, which is probably what made it not the most fun read for me. I found the magic really interesting. It had to do with kind of like a written magic called scrying where people could write a language on an object and it could convince that object to make it act in strange ways like rocks to become light as air. I found that really interesting. I didn't love the characters. It does have to do with a main character who is like a thief and she ends up stealing something she shouldn't. I feel like again, this one I just didn't love. So I think I'm going to unhaul it. I kept it just because I'm like, well, maybe I'll read the whole series, but here's the thing. I have so many series to read, which you will see when I talk about them all. Oh, here's another one I picked up. Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir. I think this is YA. I feel like I'm just gonna keep it because what it makes me think of is a very escapist, entertain me sort of book. It's about this girl who's a slave in an empire, but she has a brother who has been accused of treason, it sounds like, but she can help out in exchange for doing something to help the rebels and they promise to rescue her brother. I don't know. I think I'll keep this just because it reminds me of like books such as like Throne of Glass and things like that, which I enjoy reading when I feel emotionally stressed. I have my Harry Potter books, which they're actually all stacked up there and I didn't want to bring them all because I'm keeping them. Harry Potter is really my favorite. I've been enjoying reading them with my kids. That's what my kids are currently watching right now so that I could film this video. So yes, I'm keeping all my Harry Potters and I love the new dust jackets, I just got them. So that's a no brainer. Okay, here's another one. I just read this book. So Jade City by Fonda Lee. I really enjoyed it. it has to do with magic associated with Jade and these kind of warring clans. It's very much an urban fantasy. It made me think of kind of mobsters and mafias and groups protecting territories, but it has to do with magic too. So I feel like it was a good setup book for the whole trilogy, which I do intend to get the rest of them. Okay, I have these two books. So We Hunt the Flame and We Free the Stars by Hepsa Fazal. I think they sound really good. It's just a duology, which is fun. And it is about this girl named Zafara, who is a hunter. She disguises herself as a man and she protects people. Like she goes out into the woods and feeds the poor. So she gives me kind of Robin Hood vibes. And then there's this man who is Prince of the Sultan and he is sent out on this mission to find this artifact, I believe. She's also looking for the artifact but he also has the job of like killing her. I think it sounds really good, so I'm keeping it. All right, I have some Brandon Sanderson. So I don't have very much Brandon Sanderson. I just have Mistborn, era one. So I have books one through three here. I really like the UK copies, so I picked these up. I just really love the magic system. I really love the characters. The characters of Vin and Ellen just fighting against the Dark Lord or the, what was he called? The Lord Ruler, not the Dark Lord, the Lord Ruler. I just love the Allomancy, the magic of the Allomancy where they could ingest metals and it could help them do different things. And then some of the Allomancers could use all the metals and they're mistborn. So I'm keeping those. I'm about halfway done. This is a lot of books and a lot of these are so big. This book, So A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. I think this sounds really good. It's about this girl who is a witch but doesn't want to be a witch or something like that or maybe she doesn't even know she's a witch but she finds this book that has been lost and she doesn't realize she finds it but i think she awakens it and then everybody starts looking for the book including a vampire i don't know it sounds fun i'll probably keep it till next september or something but i have that and then i have this book which i recently picked up in a recent haul and i'm so excited to read it it's the atlas six by olive blake i'm not quite sure how to say her name this sounds so good. It's about the secretive Alexandrian society that takes in certain members. I think it takes in five a year and the class is a class of six. So one of them won't be able to go. I feel like it has dark academia vibes and the second book just came out. So I am keeping that one. All right, I have a book trilogy 
that I loved and I cannot wait to reread this. I should reread this. So this is a Bear in the Nightingale trilogy. It's a wonderful fantasy trilogy. It's very historical, set in 1600 Russia, and it has like wonderful folklore and things like that in it. Oh, so good. So keeping those for sure. I also have this one. This is the, the Alloy of Law. So this is also a Mistborn book, but it's era two. And so it's set 300 years past the other characters and it's a new set of characters. And I really did enjoy this book. I felt like it was very lighthearted and fun. Now I have these two books. So these are The Bone Shard Daughter and The Bone Shard Emperor. I've read this one. I really enjoyed it. So I picked up the second one. It also kind of has a written language magic system, but it has to do with like specific bones and then um, making constructs or almost little like robot type animals. It's really good. And the daughter who has been denied the magic by her father and she kind of sneaks behind his back is basically the plot. Okay, and then I have some middle grade ones. And so I have, this is the second book in the Keeper of Velocities, but I have books one through four. I'm just not sure exactly where they are, but it's about this girl named Sophie who doesn't know she's an elf until she gets brought into the elven world and trained up in this school. So it very much has magic school vibes and she's kind of special for a variety of reasons that nobody understands. So I'm keeping those. I think my kids will like them when they get old enough. Okay, I also have this book. So this is The Witch's Heart by Genevieve Gornicek. It's a Norris mythology retelling that has to do with a woman and I think, what's his name? Loki? Yes, Loki. So this looks good. Keeping that, because I haven't read it yet. I also haven't read this one. I've started it and then I got distracted, but it's not because I don't want to read it. I do want to read it. It's The Girl Who Drank the Moon. This is more middle grade. I want to read it and then see when I can read it to my kids because I think they'll really like it. It's about this town that feels like it has to sacrifice a baby every year to the witch in the woods and the witch finds the babies and takes them through the woods to the next town to save them. I picked this book up kind of on a whim because I thought it was really pretty. It's called The Kingdom of Back by Marie Lu and I believe it has to do with the sister of Mozart and she is also a master composer and everything but she's in the shadow of her brother and then I think it does have some magic in it music and magic and unbreakable bond between brother and sister. So I want to read that. And so I picked up this one, Sweep, a story of a girl and her monster. I'm keeping it. It looks so sweet about this chimney sweep and about like how she gets stuck and then how she has this golem or something that kind of keeps her company. I just recently hauled this trilogy. I believe it's called the Fourth Realm Trilogy. It has the Traveler, the Dark River, and the Golden City. And I think it has to do with these like group of people called the Travelers who are known for like influencing the course of history and then a group of people who protect them. Something like that. I'm keeping it. I just recently got it from my sister and I'm excited to read it. Along with this one, Gallant by V.E. Schwab. I think it's like middle grade or YA about this girl who has lost both her parents and the only thing she has is a journal from her mom and she got this letter from what appears to be relatives to say like come visit but they didn't send it but she goes anyway and she learned some stuff. I think that's what it's about. And then I also have this series, the Queen of Renthia series, so the Queen of Blood, the Reluctant Queen, and the Queen of Sorrows. And so these books are about a place where there are these like evil spirits everywhere. And the only person who protects the society is the queen, but the queen is human. And so there's a lot of people kind of waiting to take the place of the queen, including the main character. And so it just sounds good. So I'm keeping that as well. So you can see I've hardly unhauled any books, honestly. Okay, so I have this book and I feel like this is more of a science fiction. So it's This Golden Flame by Emily Victoria. And I also think it is YA about an orphaned girl who has lost her brother. She's looking for her brother, but instead she finds, I believe a robot and awakens the robot. And then everybody starts coming after them, possibly. Then I had these books. I love the Lord of the Rings. And so I have this set, including The Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings books. So I love rereading these every so often. Okay, next, I picked this up kind of on a whim because I heard about it on so many people's channels. So it's Age of Myth by Michael J. Sullivan. It's book one in the Legends of the First Empire series. Not sure how many books there are, but it has to do with this world that I believe has like, Fae and humans, and the humans have been worshiping the Fae for a long time until a human kills a Fae and they realize that they're not like immortal gods and I think everything kind of falls to pieces. That's the first book. So you can see a lot of my books, I have the first book in a series just to see if I'm gonna like it. 
If I don't, those are the ones I'm unhauling. Okay, so I also have the new Holly Black book. So Book of Night. It sounds like it's about this girl named Charlie who's a thief, but she has powers. I'm, I don't know more than that. I'm going to keep it until I decide otherwise. And then this one is YA, I'm pretty sure. Only a Monster by Vanessa Len. So it says, in every story there's a hero and a monster. She is not the hero. I think it has to do with the fact that she comes from a family of monsters and she doesn't want to be known for that. And then I also have this book. I believe it's another mythology type book. I don't know how to say it and I'm not going to butcher it. So it has to do with the princess of Crete and the monitor and her brother. I going to keep that. I really need to start reading my mythology books. I also have this book and I'm not sure if it should be in my fantasy or my like mystery books. I'm not sure. It's about this girl whose father was a famous map maker, but he's found dead. I thought he was missing. Found dead in the New York Public Library and she finds a map and then people start chasing her, I believe. So I'm keeping it. And then I have this book, which I got from Book of the Month. It's a Camelot type of book, so I'm going to keep it. I'm not as drawn to it, so this is kind of a maybe unhaul, but it's Half Sick of Shadows by Laura Sebastian. So it sounds like Camelot plus magic and this girl who can see the future and she helps out in some way. I'm going to put it there and I'm going to wait to unhaul it. I think I'm going to keep it. And then I have The Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow, and this is a historical fantasy said in 1893 and there's this group of sisters I believe in New Salem that have to band together because something bad is awakening or coming to light. So I want to keep that. The City of Brass by S. A. Chakraborty. I cannot say that name. I picked this up because I love the idea of the setting. So 18th century Cairo. So again I love historical fantasy and this girl accidentally summons like a djinn warrior and then they flee together out of Cairo to this like magical, mystical city, the city of brass. I don't know. A lot of people love it. I want to give it a shot. Same with this one. Here's another first book in a series, Malice by John Gwen. So this has, I believe, Nordic influences as well. It's also just kind of a big war story. The Banished Lands has a violent past and now things are starting to stir again and we're talking like giants and things like that. And then it follows a number of different people who are involved in it. These are very big books. We'll see if I like it. I feel like this might not be a type of fantasy I like, a more like war driven fantasy, but we shall see. Okay, and then I have these three books, which I'm currently reading this, which I'm really enjoying it. So it's The Ruin of Kings by Jen Lyons and it's, it's called the Chorus of Dragon series because I think there's five books. I just have the first three. It's about a man named Kieran who was a missing son of one of the treasonous princes and it kind of tells a story from there and I like so far how it's being told from like a story perspective like he's in jail at the very beginning is going backwards to tell the story which I'm enjoying. So all three of these I will be keeping and then I also have Amari and the Knight Brothers. I really enjoy this book. It's a middle grade magic book about this girl whose brother went missing and she just wouldn't let it go. And then eventually he kind of invites her into his world, which was a world of magic and a magic school to be trained up. And it goes from there. So again, a trope I just really enjoy. All right, and then I have this book, which I kind of go back and forth on. It's These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. I believe it's YA. And I feel like it's a bit of a Romeo and Juliet retelling, but it's set in Shanghai, 1926, two gains. One of them, there's a girl named Juliet and a boy named Roma. So it goes from there. Okay, all right. Oh, so this is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by B.E. Schwab. Okay, I liked this book, but I thought I would love this book. It's kind of got a historical feel to it, which is usually my thing, but it really wasn't. So this starts in France, early 1700s, about this girl who doesn't want to have the normal life. She wants to explore, she wants to travel. She does not want to get married and have a farm and have children and all those things. She does not want that. And so on the like day of her wedding, she escapes into the forest and runs into a demon, I think, and makes a deal with him that she doesn't have to have her life. And in exchange, he agrees, but the catch is that 
no one will ever remember her. So she goes through life without people remembering her. Like she can go to the bathroom and come back into the room and have to reintroduce herself. So you follow her life through that. And it was interesting. I actually think I'm just going to unhaul it because I don't want to reread it. I liked it, but I didn't, I didn't love it. So that's like book number four on my unhaul pile. I have this book, which was recommended to me. So Walk on Earth, A Stranger by Ray Carson. So this sounds really good. So it's about this girl who can sense gold, like veins of gold in the earth. And so she's very valuable and people are, are seeking after her because of that power. And I think this is the first book in a trilogy. Yes, book one. So I'm gonna keep it. I think it sounds really good. I think people recommended this because I like Bear and the Nightingale so much. I think that's why I got that recommendation. Okay, I also have these books. So the Mirror Visitor trilogy, or there's actually four, I think. So Winter Promise is the first one, The Memory of Babel, and The Missing of Claire de Lune. So these three books, I believe these are YA books about this world where there are like floating lands and people are from different floating lands. And then one girl is promised to like marry a man from a different floating world or something like that. And it goes from there. I think it sounds really good. I'm not sure though. And I have all three, so we shall see. And then the last one, this is the last book. So this is A Shadow and Bone by Lee Bardugo. So the only Lee Bardugo I have read is Six of Crows. And so this is set in the same universe. It's just earlier, I believe, about this girl named, I think, Elena, who is an, she's an orphan. <laughs> you know, they always are. And she is part of this like military group who has to go into the shadow fold, which is like this scary dark woods and like demons and things and there, monsters in there. But when she goes in there, her power is awakened and she saves everybody. And then she then becomes invited into the world of the Grisha, a magical military elite. And she gets trained up in that. So this is a start of that. I believe there's three, three books in this series. So that is all my fantasy books. You guys, I counted it. It's 86 books. I have 86 fantasy books. And I'm not really unhauling very many of them because I haven't read a lot of them. This is really a genre I have recently gotten back into. I read more as a kid and then I stopped reading fantasy and now I'm just, I'm all about it. So these are the only books I'm unhauling. How crazy is that? And I don't even know if I'm gonna unhaul The Martian or if I'm just gonna sneak it back into my pile onto my shelves, but five books. I'm only unhauling five books. And then my stack for the ones I'm keeping, but I have read is 35. So the number of books I still need to read is in the 40s, almost 50s, but there are so many of these books I wanna reread. So I'm so glad I went through all of these. Now I can organize them back onto my shelves. I can know which ones I have. I'll post those five books to Pango Books. This was successful. I'm so happy I'm doing this. I only have one more group of books to go through and it's kind of my miscellaneous piles. So look for that and then I might do a tour of my shelves after that I have them all organized to exactly what I want, to piles where they're read and unread. But anyway, this video is long enough. If you have stuck around to the end, please consider giving the video a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel if you want to. All right, guys, take care.